Now this is the bit that often gets left out. Builders rarely talk about it and that is becoming a real problem because if you miss out ventilation then you're storing up problems for years to come. I'm Judith Leary-Joyce, I'm a retrofit advocate because we retrofitted our Victorian end of terrace and the results were so stunning, saving 75% of our energy usage that I wrote the beginner's guide to eco-renovation so you could do the same but more easily than we did. Not only will you be more comfortable and better off, but you'll help reduce the 20% of global emissions that comes from leaky homes. Now that's a win-win. My aim is to talk about everything retrofit in plain English so you understand enough to have a good conversation with the builder and you know the words to use to go searching for information when you need it. So why don't builders talk about ventilation? Well, there's nothing underhand, I just think they don't understand it. Like all of us, they get into a groove. What's worked fine once, surely that's just going to work again. And they also, of course, have to stick to building regulations. And this, these state that trickle vents in your windows are sufficient. In case you haven't come across these, trickle vents are the small grills at the top of your window frame and they let in fresh air. They're either permanently open, or if you've got newer windows, you may have the choice of having them open or closed. However, when you want a warm, cosy home that's cheaper to run, you'll probably go a bit beyond the basic requirements of building regs, in which case you also need to go beyond the levels in ventilation as well. So where does ventilation fit into retrofit? Well, if you want a truly energy efficient home, you need to address three areas. There's insulation, air tightness, and then ventilation. And air tightness and ventilation go together. Air tightness takes out all the uncontrolled air by wrapping the house in an airtight, breathable membrane. I'll put a video up above so you can, if you want to understand more about that. Now this is what's called the thermal envelope. The thermal envelope is the structure that separates the air inside your house from the air outside your house. Very simple really. So it's everything that shields the living space from outside. Now you'd think that's just talking about the house, wouldn't you? But if you've got an old house, you'll know from experience there's more to it than this. We've lived in our Victorian house for years with what felt like a minimal thermal envelope. There've been times quite often when it's been warmer outside than inside and it felt as if very little separated us from the garden. Sadly, it's not only old houses that experience this. I know people who live in new builds that would also doubt the presence of a thermal envelope. When you get the air tightness right, you stop all of that uncontrolled air from leaky windows and doors, gaps in the masonry from under the floors or through the roof. But also when you get it right, you can create a pretty sweaty, steamy thermal envelope. I don't know if you know it, but a family produces about 20 litres of moisture a day just by living. That's about 35 pints, and that's one heck of a lot of moisture. In your old leaky house, that's not a problem. There's so much air moving between inside and outside that the moisture's quickly dealt with. But imagine 35 pints floating around in an airtight thermal envelope. Now you're talking big problems. Now trickle vents will help a bit if you always have them open, but since they also let in a cold draft, it's always going to be tempting to close them up and this is often what happens. So you have to find a way that balances your level of air tightness with equivalent ventilation to keep your well insulated house dry. The measure that relates to this is the ACH, the air change rate. Now the air change rate is the number of times the total volume of air in the room or the house is completely removed and replaced in one hour. Building regulations calls for an ACH of one, so a complete change of air once every hour. The other bit of jargon you need here is purge ventilation. Now this just refers to the times when you need a quick boost in air movement. It's like me when I'm frying, I always need a purge. The options, as my grandson frequently reminds me, are to open the window, increase the speed of the hob extractor, 
or boost the ventilation system. So if you can just open a window, why not do that? Well, this is definitely an option. It's essentially what my mum used to call air in the room. As long as your windows open fully enough, this will work. The risk in relying on this is first remembering to do it on a regular basis and second being determined enough to open up wide when it's freezing cold outside and you don't want to lose all the heat you've so lovingly created. So let's talk about options for consistent effective ventilation. What can you do? Well, most effective is the MVHR, that's Mechanical Ventilation with Heat Recovery. This is a whole house system and the bulk of it sits in your loft and vents go from the loft into each room and it provides fresh filtered air into a building whilst holding on to most of the heat. It filters the air, but it also balances the air, which means it adjusts the airflow to make sure the temperature's consistent and you're comfortable everywhere in your house. Now that's great, but the downside of MVHR is the amount of room it needs. It's fine when built into a new house, but it's not so easy to retrofit. If you can include it, then this is mo the most efficient way of managing the ventilation in your home. If you're in an old house that can't manage an MVHR, one option is to install single room heat recovery ventilation units, SR, HR. These are the next best thing to a full MVHR. This is what we've got. We started with two, one in the kitchen and one in the bathroom, but then realized it wasn't enough. But the beauty of these systems is that long as the room in question's got an outside wall, it's easy, you can just add another one. And this is a particularly big advantage if you want to step your retrofit and do it one room at a time. They work individually, but most brands can be linked up with an app so you can get consistency across the house. You set the humidity level to what you want, and then they keep it to that level by changing speed as required. The only time I ever notice this happening is when I'm having a shower. The unit's got three different speeds and it automatically shifts between one and another to manage the excess moisture until the rooms dry again. What I really love is that these units are also heat recovery. I'm sure you know how cold a standard bathroom ventilation fan can make the room. But the SRHR, single room heat recovery, is quite different from that. I don't notice any draft at all. And in checking out my facts for this video, I've also discovered we can now add CO2 sensors, carbon dioxide, so the fan will manage that aspect of air quality better than it's able to do right now, which is brilliant. Plus, we can upgrade the filters. So they'll now deal with more of the common indoor pollutants, including pollen, mold, spores, fungi, bacteria and viruses. So I'm going to be ordering both of those ASAP. Speaking of filters, both systems, the MVHR and the SRHR, have filters that need cleaning at regular intervals. I don't know how it works with MVHR, so you need to look into that. But our units tell us when our, ours need attention with a flashing red light. There are a number of different manufacturers. We've got Blauberg single room heat recovery units in each room, so we've got a total of six with different capacities to suit the size of each room. They work very well and they're unobtrusive. Nobody notices them. At the outset, we started with EnviroVent, which is now installed here behind me in the barn. It works fine, but it's a bit more noisy than the Blauberg and it's a much bigger unit altogether. However, it is extremely good at drying the washing. So if this is an issue for you, it might well be worth a look. It would go well in a utility room or a kitchen. I'd suggest you search heat recovery ventilation and see what options you come up with. I'll put links for what we've got in the description. And if you've got any questions, call up and speak to the manufacturer's tech people and ask away. We always found the tech people at both EnviroVent and Blauberg have been really helpful when we've needed it. They've been fantastic.
The final option is you can install a PIV system, positive input ventilation. This is a push system. It sucks air in through the roof, filters it, then pushes it down through the house, forcing the impure stale air out of the property. Now this process depends on you having trickle vents, but also natural pathways, which is a polite way of saying drafts and air gaps. So it actually won't work if you've made your house airtight. In fact, it could be detrimental. But if you're not planning on airtightness, then take a look. One thing to be aware of is that the air coming in from the loft is mostly cold. This is a system that's often used in rented properties with the intention of reducing condensation at mould, but tenants frequently turn it off because it's increasing the size of their energy bills by making the house cold. So when it comes to ventilation, you've got options. Just make sure that you choose one. It's a huge risk to leave ventilation out of the retrofit equation. You will definitely end up with condensation, which if it's left unchecked will lead to mould and all the health issues that you know that brings. So go exploring and find the system that you think is going to work best for you and talk with the techies, talk with everybody else you can find to understand. But be very clear with your builder from the outset that this is what you want. Because when you get the ventilation right, you can pretty much forget it, except for that six monthly cleaning of the filters. As ever, if you've got any questions, just let me know. And talk to me, tell me how you're getting on. I'm really interested.